What's up, Doombots? Tony Scongeli here with a return to form kind of a advice slash information video instead of a normal rant video. Eh, a little bit of a rant. Uh, I've been wanting to talk about alliances for a while and I kind of space on it. And then I saw this post on Reddit and thought, well, now's as good a time as any. Uh, and it's about not only looking for alliances, but just alliances in general, like what you're supposed to get at them and, and how to play the game. So I wanted to go into over that and I'm going to do a couple videos on it. This first one's just going to be for what I believe to be the largest part of the player base, the people who need an alliance, not necessarily the people who run alliances. Uh, so we're going to start in general just by talking about players who are looking for an alliance. And there's a couple of steps and pieces of advice I offer for uh, the average player uh, of the game to kind of figure out what to do. The first uh, is to know your worth. Now, this means something different based on whether you're a jackass like me or like a realistic human being. So let me clarify. You are only as good as what you bring to the Alliance, period. If you can consistently clear like five nodes in U7 or whatever, you know, and if you have no issues in any Greek raid, well, congratulations, you're a blue chipper. You're going to bring value. If you go six for six in war before the halfway point, you know, and you're clearing high impact teams, spot on, mate, you're a real catch. You know, you deserve to be in a place where you're surrounded by players who also accomplish those tasks. It shouldn't be hard to, for you to find a home. People quit all the time for both personal and like box nexty and reasons, but it shouldn't be too difficult for you to find a home that uh, is consistent with what you're capable of accomplishing. So keep your eye out and represent what you're capable of. You know, not just, this is my power, these are my responsibilities. Represent what you can do, the teams you have, ex you know, uh, points you've scored uh, in U7, and, and a proper alliance will definitely slide into your DMs. But, <clears throat> if you can't take out the first boss node in a U7, or if half of your war fights are combat cancels and begging for someone to clear boost so you can finally go in with your only team that can attack, or you're bragging about your defensive wins when you have three attacks, you got some bad news, Sailor. You're probably right around middle of the game as far as skill is concerned. Uh, a good guesstimate to find out how many people are exactly like you is relatively easy. Uh, you can just go right here, bring up power leaderboards, and sort by collection power. So I know that I'm probably in line with the top 3,000 players of the game or so in my accent. Now, TCP doesn't necessarily mean anything, but it does provide information. It provides how many people have similar rosters, and what they accomplish with them. So I could see that me and my alliance, I'm right around here. And I could see the names of people who also have similar rosters in other alliances. Obviously I can go and check to see like, well, where are these guys? Where are they ranked compared to us? And it gives me a little bit of an idea of not only what I'm capable of doing, but what people who probably have very similar rosters to me are capable of doing. Now I'm in this range, you know, top 2,500. Most people are not in this range. I'd say almost all but 2,500 people are. It, you know, so your range gets much wider the lower you go. So you really want to make sure that you have reasonable expectations as to what not only you are accomplishing, but you should be able to accomplish. Know your worth. If you're overperforming in your alliance and your alliance isn't really catching up to you, well, it's probably time to look for a place that's more your speed. On the other hand, if you're underperforming, you're going to have to realize that there's no carries in this game. You're probably preventing other people from growing and there's definitely a better suited alliance for you where you can work at the same rate or slightly higher than most of the other players and still be accomplishing tasks. If you're one of the lower members of an alliance, not in power, just in performance, your name's on a chopping block somewhere. So be cognizant of that and know that you should probably play to your speeds. Know your worth and understand your worth. A lot of this game involves the actions of 23 people besides you to accomplish a task. Uh, and you're gonna have a much better time and experience if 
you sync up what those actions are with people who are like you. The second is know what you want. Uh, I'm going to apologize in advance for saying this, but winning at everything is often an opinion shared by people that still have to decide which table to sit during lunch hour and Charlie Sheen. There's no downside to wanting to be better, but expectations have to be managed. It is incredibly difficult to excel at raid and war seasons at the same time, and it requires a pretty solid group of like-minded individuals willing to dedicate a lot of time, a lot of effort, and in most cases, a lot of money to the task. Do you like war? Well, find yourself a war-centric alliance, one that you know has rules and responsibilities that prioritize war over anything else. Are you a fan of challenge of raids and building different teams and find an alliance that maps raid lanes and has scheduled start times and allows you to communicate with the other players to determine if there's a fight or a skill set uh, that you have or they have that'll be better at the lane you're at. It's all about communicating for the, uh, the top pushes. Maybe you're not doing 100% on a gamma raid, but you might be able to uh, when people start talking about it. Hey, we're going to give our best shot on the last raid of the season. Let's see what happens. Those are all important things to do for that. It's very easy for your eyes to become bigger than your stomach in this game. So decide what you want to accomplish and be the kind of player that can accomplish those tasks wherever you are. It's, it's about personal responsibility, not about blaming 23 other people or 22 if one of them is your friend. And the last is really important, and I don't think a lot of people do this anymore, is know what matters. Now, I love my alliance. Uh, the core 18 of us have been together for about a year with like an occasional hiatus. Some people quit, some people have left, some people have just wanted to play less competitively, some people wanted to play more competitively than we were, and then they quit because that's not what they were capable of. So I have a lot of experience in this field. I've talked with these friends, and, and I just want, you know, I just want everyone to know, like, we have fun when we play this game, right? And that's that's still the point of playing a game, right? Having fun. The point isn't to eke out an extra 30 tier 4 ability materials so you can finally upgrade Nick Fury's basic to tier 7. It's about having fun. So what's what's fun for you? Is it competing at the highest level? Well, that's awesome. Like, go grab your credit card, buy Red Star offers, because that's pretty much what the top 100 players in the top five alliances do. Spend money to be powerful enough to compete at that level. Now, yes, of course, there are people who are free to play, but they have time on you. So if you don't have the time investment they do, well, you're never going to. Is it, is what's fun for you excelling at the level you're at? Well, that's very reasonable. Let's, you know, try out some new strategies in a raid or watch some content creator, or watch a streamer, use some new weird team. I honestly wouldn't have succeeded nearly as much in U7 if it wasn't for a friend and other streamer, Ryrie, who gave me a team that he was using and I was watching him very, very low, lower powered compared to mine, but putting up like 25 million points in U7. I was like, whatever, maybe I'll give it a shot. And it worked. He, he, I learned from him. You know, work on characters that give you an edge in raid or war. Work on characters that will help you unlock a legendary to make you a more well-rounded player. Is what brings you fun trash talking your friends in Discord when they lose a war fight? Of course it is, and honestly, I'm sorry it took me so long to get to that point. Like, no one can tell you what's fun, you just know. So, the best advice I could offer you about how not to be miserable and treat this game like a job during your play of a mobile game with superheroes is to find the things that you enjoy and do them. And it's, it's okay to, you know, be very competitive at some points, but the real, the realistic approach is to know that other people are also playing a game for fun. There is no $20,000 tournament. This isn't League of Legends. This isn't a fighting game like Street Fighter V. This, th this game is just the game. There's no, you know, strike time 
where they're talking with the best player who accomplished a task yet. Maybe that'll change if they bring in like a Grand Arena style gameplay, but that doesn't exist yet. So specifically, you know, I can offer you advice about what to look for when looking for alliances. Uh, and, and hopefully, uh, this is my opinion, but it's been helpful to a lot of people, so hopefully it'll help you. The first, uh, find an alliance with a Discord. Not a line, not a team speak, not a clan HQ or a message board on like Polygon, like an actual Discord. It is the best resource in the world for gamers, especially of games like this, and it allows people to talk and communicate and share strategy and share raid maps and reach out to another if something goes wrong and communicate to everybody that you're not going to be available for the next couple of days because Auntie Irma's birthday is coming up. You, like Discord is and and yeah i guess you could probably get away with some of the other ones the point is your alliance needs to be very communicative you can mute a discord if you're getting too many messages you can mute a person if you don't like to talk to them but you need to have the ability to talk with them and they need to be talking to you now your alliance you may be more relaxed and laid back so you'd want to find an alliance that has a discord that doesn't talk a lot but it doesn't matter as long as you know they have the proper placement of information and the ability to share that information, then you're in a good spot. The second, find an alliance with clear leadership. And I feel like this is something a lot of people don't understand. Like no one ever asks, hey, tell me about the leadership of your alliance. I don't get that. Anyone can lead an alliance because anyone can create an alliance and people can jump into an alliance. It, real leaders are surrounded by people that know their roles, their responsibilities, know how to help. No one can or should do this on their own. So the next time you ask to join an alliance, ask how many captains they have. If it's over six, that usually means there might be too many cooks. Um, Maybe too many people calling shots, war rooms being marked by too many people, raids starting at weird times. It, it, it means that they're giving away captainship. Now, captainship in this game is garbage because you get nothing for doing it. Same thing as being a leader of an alliance. You gain no additional advantage from success or failure as the leader or captain of an alliance. So it's really just who can launch raids, who can mark rooms in war, pretty, and who can invite, I guess. So if you, you don't need that many, you know? It's over six, you're probably pushing to an alliance that's, that's a little bit more casual where everyone's just kind of doing their own thing and no one really has any clear leadership and if it's two or less captains well it, it might mean that leadership micromanages a little bit and and that might not be for you so there's no 100 percent right answer like i know alliances that have like 10 captains and it's just to make sure that everyone marks things at the right time i know alliances that have one captain and they're <laughs> incredibly strong because everyone just communicates on discord but knowing how an alliance set up will really help you understand how you fit into the alliance, which is the entire point of everything. And the last, again, a thing I don't think a lot of people understand is you want to be in an alliance where you're the middle of the pack for the most part. You don't, like, it's it's an old, I believe it's a Japanese proverb of like, the, the tallest nail gets the hammer. If you're the strongest member of your alliance, you're probably going to be bored or frustrated with how long it's taking you for personal growth. And that's a bad thing, which means you're gonna look for another alliance because then you're gonna say, my alliance isn't accomplishing this task because I'm the strongest person in my alliance and I'm in the wrong alliance. So you don't wanna be the strongest member of your alliance, uh, strongest necessarily meaning power, but an accomplishment or what you can do. You don't want to be the only member of your alliance going 12 and 0 every war because that usually means you're taking war very seriously and other people are, are not. But you want you want a nice little balance. And on the other side, if you're at the bottom of the list, well, you're going to have to work really hard to keep your spot because unfortunately, when people bring the chop the the chopping block up, it starts at the bottom. It starts at the people whose power is the lowest because a lot of times the people whose power are the lowest don't have the, the width of roster to accomplish a lot of tasks. So you don't want to be on either of those sides. You want to be somewhere in the middle. If you are 4 million TCP with five or six banging teams that you know you can do any lane in, a, in a, any of the you know raids, the Greek raids, great. Like you're in a great spot. Don't worry, you'll be fine. But if you're if you have one 400k sinister six team, 
you know, I don't, and the rest of your teams are all like 130K. Like, cool, that's awesome. But like, how are you helping anyone? Who's gonna be helped by you? I, you know, maybe niche, but you're probably gonna have a really hard time fitting in. So you really just want to make sure you fit in exactly into the alliance as a responsibility. Because if you're in the middle, you can still grow. You could still track your own progress by saying, well, I'm getting stronger. I may be the middle TCP, but I'm top three damage in a, in a raid. Or uh, I may be, you know, towards the bottom on TCP, but I have a, a consistent amount of defensive victories and offensive victories in war. Or I'm putting up a ton of milestone points when the special event happens. Those are amazing things that you can keep track of to know your own personal growth as a player, and that's what you're going to get out of being an alliance. Not just the random ability materials that help you grow your characters. It, you know, it's what you are doing as a player that's making you stronger. So, the closing thoughts. When it comes to alliances, power doesn't matter, win-loss doesn't matter, percentage rates on raids don't matter. It's all about your fit. If the alliance is full of people that gel with you, you're going to have fun, and as a result, succeed because it no longer feels like a job or a responsibility but a game that you play and that's the most important takeaway this is a game that we play for fun when it stops being fun and starts being sad that's when we stop playing and that's not where the world you want to be in i don't think anyone wants to quit this game now or else you would have already so that's it for this the next video i'm going to do is just going to talk uh, on the other side, alliances, what to look for in players, what to look for uh, when building an alliance, some tips, do's and don'ts as an alliance leader or as an alliance captain, any kind of leadership. So I hope you guys uh, check that one out too. It could mean nothing to you. It's a very niche group of people, but hopefully it'll be just as entertaining. I want to say thank you guys so much. Uh, have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scongelian. Thanks for watching.